and welcome to the Canadian Kitchen Cabinet Association, CKCA. My name is Sandra Wood and I'm the Executive Director. Back in September of 2023, we hosted our national forum in Moncton, New Brunswick. We welcome more than 100 manufacturers, suppliers and dealers to this event. One of the presentations that we hosted was on artificial intelligence, and our presenter was Nikki Van Boyen, who's general manager of Gitman Kitchens and Cabinetry in BC. Nikki is an energetic self-starter who is using AI tools to help advance her company. She's an innovator and not afraid to try something new. While AI is still being understood in our industry, Nikki is already well on her way and reaping the benefits of what AI can do for her shop. We hope that you gain some valuable insights by listening to this recording. Nikki didn't use any slides. She simply interacted with the audience and spoke about the tools she was using and why she's using them. So we hope that you get lots of takeaways from this recorded session. I'd also like to extend a, a sincere thanks to Upper Canada Forest Products and Royce Air, who kindly sponsored this presentation. Enjoy. So this session is on the use of AI in the workplace, something we are hearing more and more about. But most of us think that this is for other people, big companies uh, and big budgets. But the truth is the new AI tools on the market are for everyone. And I'm pleased to introduce to you someone today who is keen to use these tools to their full advantage, Nikki Van Bowen. I hope I didn't mess up the last name. Some may know her as Nikki Gipman, is second generation kitchen cabinet manufacturing. Her father, Gerald, is here in the audience today supporting his daughter. What started as a small one-man shop in the heart of Kootenays? <laughs> Gerald and his wife, Carol Gitman, have evolved the company into one of the most unique and largest cabin cabinetry manufacturing fa facilities in the East and West Kootenays. Nikki is now very much involved in the day-to-day -day operations of running a kitchen cabinet shop and many man management decisions that we all know have to be made in this business. Nikki believes in getting the work done and doing it right. She's a keen innovator who likes to use any tools at her disposal. When I, AI came along, AI looks like Al. My name is Alan and a lot of people call, so I'm looking at it going. When, when AI came along, she knew she would run with it. Nikki has grown up in the industry her company is not big, yet she has big ideas and she's a self-starter. We're very pleased to put support this session in Nikki. We hope you again some great tips and are inspired by what Nikki is going to share with you today. Please welcome Nikki Van Bolt. Hope everybody's doing well and had a lot of coffee. I want this to be fun and kind of interactive to show you what AI can do. So I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to use my laptop. We're going to get into the tools and we're going to try stuff and it's going to be fun. Um, AI, how many people here use AI at all? How many people? Yeah. What, what are you using? How do you use it right now? Mm hmm Anybody else? And in our landscape, and I understand the populated job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as business owners, um, we're busy. We're wearing a lot of hats. We are crunched for time. There's only so much time in a day to deal with things. And um, often we are dealing with customers, dealing with staff. We're trying to grow business. And... We run out of time. We don't necessarily know how to do things, but as a business owner, we have to figure it out. We get thrown into the depths of it and we have to, have to figure it out. Um, the really cool thing about AI and where AI is going is it helps you to learn what you don't know. And you don't know you don't know it, but um, with AI, you can ask it the questions and it'll give you back responses. So, um, over the past few years, artificial intelligence has transformed from a very futuristic concept to actually practical tools um, in our everyday lives. 
And in the world of business, AI has evolved from basic automations to some really complex decision-making systems. Um, it's changing how we interact with customers and that we even have to interact with customers in certain aspects of our business. So I want to show you some tools today. Who here knows about ChatGPT? Everybody knows about it. Who's used it, played around with it, tested it out? A few, not that many. So I'm going to pop open my ChatGPT. So one problem that a lot of us encounter is, as a business owner, we need a website. But as cabinet makers, you don't necessarily know how to go about vetting a company, the questions that you should ask. You want to go into a business meeting and talking to another professional, you don't want to sound stupid. You don't want to be swayed by the glitz and glamour of all the promises that they're going to make. You want realistic questions. So you can go to a platform, free platform like ChatGPT, and you can say, um, I need a new website for my small kitchen cabinet company. I want, let's spell correctly, I want uh, to hire a local web designer, um, but I don't know what type of questions I should be asking. And as it tells me what I should be doing, it's giving me, I need to look at their portfolio, references. This sounds realistic. Um, so what's the process, the deadlines, design approach, responsive design. Then you can delve deeper into these things. And it, it's a chat platform that you can talk to. So as it comes up with all these different things, I can read through and go, OK, um, I've heard about responsive design. Will the website be mobile responsive to ensure that it looks functional? So you can use it to start um, building out what you should do. So um, when I interview candidates, what should, what questions should I ask? What platforms are recommended? And it's going to continue to give us more information. So this is one example of many, many different ways that you can do it. So with ChatGPT, a lot of people are using it in marketing. So if you open with it, you always want to open a new window. So you can go and you can say, all right, I have a website now. Now I need a marketing plan. I'm a small company. I can't necessarily hire a social media manager all of the time. Some, some companies can. Maybe it's not in our budget this year, but we need an online presence. We all know the value of marketing. So I need a one, build me a one month social media marketing plan for, what's a good platform? Instagram uh, for my small cabinet business. Um, and let's see what it gives us. So week one, it's coming up with some information that I need to figure out how to do. Awesome. So I can take that information and I can go do my homework. I can start to build out what I need. And um, we get down to content creation. Plan and create content. Who's written an Instagram caption? A couple. How long does it take you? <laughs> Way too long, right? It's, it's something that you have to be creative. You don't want it too long but you want it to target the right audience. You want it to populate in different areas of your target demographic. So if we've followed um, this basic outline that says week one, day one and two, define our goals and our target audience, well now we know. 
but now we need to come up with hashtags for it. We need to write the content. Um, and so you can, you can describe the picture that you want to put up and it'll write the caption for you. you. And then you can have it rewrite it a thousand different ways. So it's all in how you, you prompt it. Um, and you can really narrow down and you can, get, um, you can get super fun with it. So give me 15 uh, Instagram captions for, what should we do? Takers, ideas? for capturing uh, a client's attention and promoting custom kitchens. So you can see that it just came up as we sit here and watch it. It's going to write you 15 Instagram captions that you can use. And they don't suck. <laughs> um, every detail matters when it comes to crafting your perfect kitchen. So with social media, you want to keep things short, concise, um, and it's, it's populating. So if you have a set of hashtags that you like to use or have been recommended, you can include that in. You can give it the basis to formulate it the same every single time. So if this is your structure, you want it to say, you know, this is my, my caption, my tag, but then I want to um, recognize the photographer and I want to include these hashtags and I want my geolocation. You can have it do that and then you just copy paste and you can do so much with that information and it just built it in seconds. Yeah. So in this particular example, mm -hmm. let's say the uh, quote 11, the, you know, the penis and our, our custom agents are the canvas. How do we know that some other company had it used that, that's tag right, and we're kind of infringing, or worse, we're being received as a company? Uh, quick Google search. So if it's... Have you searched Google lately? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, you're not using it as your company's tagline. You're using it in social media. And Truth be told, when you're flipping through a platform like Instagram, you're looking at the pictures, you're watching the videos, most people aren't reading the caption. But you need a caption, and you need it to say something, and you need to target your audience. What you're trying to do with social media is put um, your hashtags to, so that it populates for your target audience. And you want to keep your caption short and concise. You can definitely do longer ones, and there's reasons for doing that too within your social media context. But um, cooking is an art, and our custom kitchens are the canvas. If you put that into Google, and that is a company's tagline, that company will populate, and it will, and it will be very obvious that that's their their tagline. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all had a disgruntled customer somebody doesn't understand that five piece doors expand and contract they change they crack all these different things um, and we've spent hours agonizing over how to write a professional response to it and or, you know, it's OK, I got to call the customer and we got to have a conversation about it. What am I going to say? And you get nervous, you get scared, you are agonizing over it forever. You can take their email, you can paste it into ChatGPT and you can say, my company's stance on this is this, this. And um, you're tapping into the knowledge that's already out there. ChatGPT knows that a five piece door is going to expand and contract and all of these things but the customer doesn't. So you don't have to give it all of the knowledge. You just have to say, this is my problem. Help me answer this question professionally and concisely. And it will write, if you want it in an email format, if you want to say, I have to call them and discuss it, um, it will give you things to say, how to approach it. Um, and you can go back to it constantly and say, I need that more concise, or I need that professional, or whatever keywords you want to use. Um, so 
you, you can adapt it and you can keep questioning it to get more exactly what you want. So it's not the be all end all answer. Like I'm not saying copy and paste it, but it gets you there faster. Instead of spending an hour writing out the email and going, Ugh, does that sound professional? Ugh, did I hit the point? Did I say it properly? You've got the structure. You've, it's, all the points are there and all you have to do is adapt it, tweak it, um, read it through, make sure it's right. Um, and, and you're done that problem in minutes rather than hours. And you can move on to the next, next thing you need to worry about. One thing that I really like to use AI for is staff. If you are hiring and you need a job description, how long does it take to write a full job description? Go to ChatGPT and open up a new chat and say, I am hiring a kitchen designer. We offer benefits. We offer, what do we offer? We offer flexible work hours uh, starting at $25 an hour and I need a job description. So you can see that it's populated all the things you probably didn't think you should put in your job description from what are their key responsibilities? Client consultation, design development, space planning. We all know this, but to come up with it and write it out will take us hours or we have to hire somebody else to do that for us and formulate it. So you can see it's giving you list benefits. So I can go back and I can say, um, rewrite, we are located in Cranbrook, BC. Um, it is full time and add in uh, medical and dental benefits. And it revises it and you can just get it to update the information. If you are reading through and it's got the job description, you want to change anything, you can just ask it to change it and it changes it. So it's, it's a super fun tool that has so many options. Yes, it does. Um, when you're using it on your phone, on your send a message, you can <laughs> talk to it. <laughs> um, so the reason I wanted to talk about this as long as I have and kind of show you a few different ways is that what's happening in the world is chat GPT is your, um, it's a free online open research platform. So you don't want to give it any kind of proprietary information. So when AI first came out and chat GPT um, was all the rage and people were absolutely amazed by what it could do, um, a lot of employees at Samsung working on fancy code ran into a problem with the code but didn't know how to fix it. So they went to ChatGPT and they're like, oh, let's see what AI can do. Well, AI solved the code as quickly as it could write this job description. But what that did was it put Samsung's proprietary code out there in the world so now anybody that goes and wants to solve a problem in coding actually has Samsung's code to back it up. So it's an ever-growing platform that's learning. It scours the web, it's learning information, and so you don't want to give it stuff like that. Um, but you'd be amazed that it, it knows everything. So just be mindful when using it. If there's anything proprietary that you don't want the whole world to know, um, I think in kitchen cabinets, it's not too crazy what, we're, what we'd be using it for. Um, nothing totally top secret in that kind of context. Um, so then there's apps popping up 
that use ChatGPT, but in your ecosystem. So if you use different apps, that information doesn't go back to the research platform and isn't widely accessible by the greater public. So there's a lot of, um, and, and that's how people are cashing in and making money with it, right? Because it is a free platform. So they're developing an app to then make you subscribe to. But there's some really cool apps out there that can really help um, help you out. So I want to show you my one of my favorites, which is Scribe. So this is a free AI tool on Google Chrome. And up here, I have this little button, and it has a start capture. So what Scribe does is Scribe takes whatever you're doing on your computer and instantly transforms it into a standard operating procedure with a step-by-step -step guide on how to do something. So, and it's free. So I know we have a lot of people that use monday.com as their basically ERP system. And you need to go in and you need to train your staff on how to use it. So if I go and I open up, we use Odoo. Um, so I can start a scribe and I want to show my staff how to create a quote. So I can go and start. I can go to my CRM. I can create a new job. New client and new We're going to add. New quote. I'm going to pull up a template. I want to use this one. It's going to pre-populate my information. I've priced out my job. I'm going to stick in that it costs $10,000 today, or $100,000. <laughs> um, and we're going to save that. Then I can go send it, whatever I need to do. I can stop that, and it's going to think, and it's going to pop out exactly all the steps I have in order to make that estimate. As fast as I did it, it's captured every step of the process for you. And it's free. So this is a really great tool. Um, what's super fun is your staff. So you can then send this to staff. It tracks how many times and who on your staff open it, review it, are constantly going back to get the information to do it right. Um, it gives you insights into who needs help on what different aspects of the job. And it also gives you a follow me option. So when your staff go to do it, they can hit the link at the top, which is going to navigate them to this page, and then guide them step by step through it. So we have guide me, and it's going to pop back up here. And as you follow the steps, all the information you need is right there so you can follow along with, with the tutorial right there on screen, which is pretty cool. One thing that's super fun with this is, I've told this story to a couple of people, um, sometimes we have to restart our computer um, in a like safe mode, basically. Um, when things aren't quite working right. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know what the steps are, but my staff ask me all the time, um, you know, my, my software isn't working or Google's not cooperating today, what do I do? And they need to restart. So you can go create a page, and just like with ChatGPT, you can create this page with AI. 
So you can um, start Windows in safe mode. And now I have the answer. And I can go through and follow the steps and answer it. Um, you can print this off, you can share it in PDF, you can do whatever, and I distributed it to my staff, and six months ago I've never been asked that question again. They've, they have it posted on the computers that occasionally run into problems because we need to update some computers here and there, and we haven't got to it yet, so then um, now my staff can handle the situation. I don't have to call my IT guy, I don't have to go save the day and do it for them. I got the answer. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I want to try a new one. So something from you guys. What, what is a standard operating procedure that you, you need? Lockout procedure. Um, lockout procedure for, do you have a specific machine in mind? <laughs> lockout procedure for CNC. <laughs> and it just ran through and wrote that for you. Pretty cool, right? And you can adapt it. So um, one thing that I've found fun is training staff. Yep. From this sample of a, a lockout procedure, if you wouldn't put it in the machine or manufacturer and the model, would it draw information on that machine? Very likely. Yep. That is something related to lockout procedure, mm -hmm. or if anybody else had already done a in-depth lockout procedure on, uh, on the AI. It doesn't even have to be on AI. If it's accessible on the internet, AI will write it for you. Okay. I, I have, but uh, I wanted to have uh, a shortcut and find, let's say, information for mm -hmm. what happened at the last leak now in Germany. Okay, wanted to save some time. And it apologized to me that it only deals with information older than two years. Yes. Use the last two years. Because it's still a research platform. So it's, n it's not up to date on current events. Okay, there's no way around that? Not really. There are some current events it will know um, because there's enough people out there asking about it, and the information is out there on the internet, but it's not scouring for news articles, current events, stuff like that. It's looking at the information out there and bringing it together for you. So it's not a place to get your news. It's not a place for that current event type information. But you can... Um, and I don't use them, so I can't recommend one, but there are different platforms with different apps, basically, that do that. And so you can take a PDF and you can go, okay, summarize this for me. Tell me what happened here. If you, I just don't know what the apps are. I don't use it for that, right? So um, it's not a tool that I have in my back pocket to say this is the app you should use for that specific, but you can definitely upload a document and say, give me the highlights. Correct me if I'm wrong, but ChatGPT is just one AI platform for saying highs of others that do different. Yes. So ChatGPT is the language yeah. model at the base of 99% of them. And then they're building the apps on top of that and they're using that as the basis. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. But you have CAC it for Yeah. Yes. But it takes you the APIs, you have to pay for it. 
Uh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So if you look here, <laughs> if you look here, um, you've got ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4, which is locked, which is the most current language model. But you do have to pay for it, and it's 20 bucks a month. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. And it's... Nothing. That's in the rollback. It's just monthly? Okay. And there, it's constantly evolving, and I just... <laughs> they don't want to overload it with people just... Yeah. Yeah. They have a safety feature built in the bliss chat that here you read a letter you, to this, you can well, what if I want to hack my competitor's server and knock them out? It's not a hacking platform. If I ask the question, yeah, how do I gain access? Let's try. <laughs> how do I? Like, and it might tell you not to. See, it's it straight up says, "Sorry, I can't help you with that." Yes, you can totally work around it um, because it's all in how you prompt it, right? It's all in the questions that you ask around the problem to get the answer that you need. A company hacking into another company's server, how which uh, described it. Yeah. Yes. Like that. Yeah, because it's yeah. only uh, all malware that your your IT people put into your computer and trying to protect your company. Uh, how many times, or we year of time, where uh, company, someone has hacked into their computer, into their system, and now you have ransomware. Yeah. Well, look what just happened in Vegas. MGM got hacked, and they had to end half the properties on the Vegas Strip or MGM properties, and you couldn't use a slot machine. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't get into your hotel room because they hacked it for a ransom. Right. Yeah. I would, I would say in the kitchen cabinet world, we're pretty safe from people wanting to hack into our systems. Out of the I have to pass the one who had all the brutal calls in place. They were hacked. They had insurance for that. Yeah. And the insurance was offset. But they lost the rings of production. Yeah. Wow. The whole PS they have home hacked in the last two years. Yeah. Yeah. The Unicorn visa got hacked. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. One million dollars and took an assessor right now, give them one million. But you thought about it, not cool. You know about I don't know how they worked at insurance. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're, they're now, oh, the Ford. Yeah. Totally. So, um, Scribe is a super fun tool, like I said, and its, it's um, base is free. So you can go on and you can capture anything you do on Google Chrome totally for free to build operating procedures or anything for that. If you want to capture software, um, so as, a, as cabinet manufacturers, we work with companies like Microvellum, Cabinet Vision, um, and there's a ton of fantastic resources out there already on how to do different things. But that doesn't necessarily mean it works in my ecosystem. And sometimes we have staff that will go looking for answers on how to do things, but we don't have the system set up that way or we purposefully don't want them to do something. So I need some of my own training tools on how to set up a job, how to do certain things. Um, so I want to capture these scribes outside of Google Chrome. And for that, it's 20 bucks a month. And then you can just, you can capture anything on your computer, any software at all to build that procedure, which is really cool. Um, another tool that I really like is Motion. And so I didn't really think this one through because I'm here, so I don't have anything on my calendar this week. Um, but I'm going to explain to you what it does, in kind, and it's Saturday, so it's probably not going to populate anything for me. Um, so Motion is my 
calendar. It smart tells me what I should be working on and it organizes my day so that I get everything done on time. Um, if my staff need um, help with something, they can book in with me for time and they set when they need it done. It rearranges my calendar. So what I've done is I've set up um, templates. So under my sales and design, if I need to add a project, I have a template and I'm going to look over a project that one of my team has done after a final site measure. So it's going to give me all the things that I need to double check. Because one thing I find is I get pulled in a thousand directions throughout the day. So I can be looking at a job, but I might only get partway through it before uh, production staff's coming in and need something right now, or I have to take a phone call, or I'm covering a lunch break and I have to go help a customer in the showroom. I come back and uh, I don't remember where I was at. Do I have to start over? Do I pick up where I left off? So basically my template is a checklist of all the things I need to check. So if I use this template, it then asks me how high of a priority is it. Um, it's going to auto schedule and it tells me when I need to have it done by. So if I set that, we'll see if this works. If it's a Saturday, I've never done it on Saturday. <laughs> um, but what it does is it takes my to-do list, um, which we all have, and it will organize it across my week and it will take into account my um, my pre-scheduled appointments on my calendar where my I book in my CRM and it takes all of my appointments from my Outlook calendar where maybe I do my business meetings because I just have it set up whatever's most convenient so I can run it on my phone and then motion on my work computer will pop up with a little notification in the corner every 15 to 30 minutes to say this is what you should be working on right now um, and are you done it do you need more time and so if I'm done it, I can hit the checkbox. If I'm not done with it, it says how much more time do you need? And it will, in real time, scale out my day. And if it's something's taking me longer, it pushes things. If I'm getting more work done faster, it moves up more things for me to do. And it keeps me on task and on track all day long across all the different things that I have to do. Yeah. I don't know if it's done in your schedule. But I'm curious about whether you can set it up so that you can have sort of like your dream done, like the part of the day where you are very effective in, in creative work. Yep. Like the, where I write. Yep. So. <laughs> yes. So you can do that through um, scheduling it and um, time blocking it. So you can set within your tasks and projects if you want um, just a, it's the, in here they call it focus time. So you can set up your focus time to be the same time every day or whatever works. And it'll even ask you if, um, how long things take. So you can pre-build into it. You know, typically it takes me two hours to look over somebody's kitchen. These are all the tasks I have to do when I'm looking over that thing. And then... Um, it gives me the block of time. And if, if my day is crunched for time and I can only get part of it done, it will divide it into, okay, you have 45 minutes to work on it and get it done now. And you can run through it. And it, it's super cool. I wish it was working because <laughs> it's super cool how it works. Um, I just don't have anything on my calendar on a Saturday and it doesn't want me to. <laughs> my name is most um, it's, it's an app that you can use on any, yeah, you can use it on your phone, on your computer. I like it on my computer because it just pops up with notifications and says, this is what you should be working on. And we know how easy it is to get sidetracked and into something else. And it's nice to have that reminder saying, hey, you should be looking at this kitchen or something like that. And, yep. Yeah. Is this generally used in your company or is it just you use that? Um... I use it all the time and then my design staff are starting to use it to manage all of their different clients so that they can do more customer work and stay on track and not miss something. So they, when they do an in-home, um, Donna has a checklist of all the things that she has to do to get her design ready, her quote put together, book the next meeting. So she's got a list of all of that and then um, if she's not getting to it, or something, then the system keeps her on track all day. 
they see it as a help, not as a control. Yep. Yeah. Um, especially when dealing with customers, you're pulled all over. And yep. Your designers, powders, and yep. mood adjustment. Yep. Yep. So it'll integrate both of us so that I can see what she's working on, see if she needs help. Um, you can book things. Um, I don't really use the booking feature just because I, I run that in our CRM. I want to know how, specifically to that customer and that job how many meetings I've had, when they spanned, and keep my notes for the meetings there. But with it, this is a platform that you use. You do have the option to share your booking page. And then based on how busy your calendar is and all the things on your to-do list, when somebody goes to book a meeting with you, it'll tell them what's best for you. And you can set parameters that I like to meet with customers in the afternoon or, you know, I need to do creative stuff with customers in the morning. And you can set those parameters so that it's always going to default to that time of day. And then it's only going to suggest, you know, if you're booking an in-home consultation, it's only going to suggest to the customer the days that work for you. And you can set up triggers so that um, if I book an in-home, now this is my to-do list after that to make sure I get everything done. And then it'll put all of those onto your calendar after that appointment. So it's a really cool tool. <laughs> I really enjoy using it. Motion. Motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we've covered the basics of ChatGPT and how to start tapping into AI and using it. Um, we've talked about Scribe and building operating procedures and training guides for your staff. We've talked about scheduling and being smarter with our time. And one that I get a lot of questions on is customer service. So if we know that ChatGPT can write us emails and it's a chat platform and it talks back and forth, why aren't we using it with our customers? So in the world of design and marketing and social media, people want to be able to reach somebody when they have a question now. Um, and so on our website, and you'll, you see this on a lot of websites, we have a little message box. And it's Saturday, it's the weekend, it knows I'm offline, so it's gonna say, leave me a message. During the work day, a little picture of me pops up and it says, hey, Nikki here, I'm online. Do you have any questions? Is there anything I can help you with? And on my work computer, my computer will ring like a telephone when somebody's on our website asking questions. If I'm not at my desk, it buzzes on my phone just like a text message, so I can answer it. The problem with that is now I, single-handedly am accessible to my customers all of the time with questions. So what they've done is they've added AI to it. So AI will now pop up and answer the questions. And his name is Apollo. He doesn't pretend to be me, although I could set him to pretend to be me. Um, so within our website app, did I just close it? Within our little website, Talk To is live free chat for your website. And if you've written any kind of articles about cabinetry that you have on your website, it reads your website and it goes, let me answer your questions. And so I've built um, our knowledge base. We've got information for our customers on care and maintenance, adjusting hinges, all of that. And then I can go find them. I can go to my AI assist and I can play with Apollo and ask him questions. So this is where I can set his rules, um, what I want him to talk to our customers about, et cetera. Um, and then you can ask him. So we can ask um, what type of fridge should I get for my kitchen? And Apollo is going to answer based off the information that I have told them is relevant. 
So the articles that I write for our website are biased to the way that I want my customers to purchase. I want them to have specific information. So Apollo will answer it the way I want it done. It's not tapping into the greater chat GPT and giving my customer wild answers that are then going to cause me problems in the sales process. He's going to tap into only the information I've told him is relevant. And if you, he has rules by default. Um, so you can see here that he needs to greet the user at the beginning of conversation, provide answers only from the given knowledge, refuse to answer questions not related, um, avoid suggestions and justifications, don't use jokes. So you can limit what he's allowed to do so that he will answer the way you want him to. <laughs> so this is super fun. Um, so within this platform, I can set up all of my sales staff so customers can go and they can ask for a specific staff member. Um, and then instead of it ringing on my computer, it rings to them. And they're talking directly to their customers. Um, it's actually become really funny that a lot of local contractors, and I don't understand why they do this, instead of picking up the phone and calling me or texting me, they go to our website and they go talk to Apollo now. And they get <laughs> questions and answers, which because I've programmed him to answer it the way I want it answered, he doesn't know specific to my jobs, but he knows how I'm going to answer the question. So if, um, if the contractor goes, hey, what size of fridge for this customer? Apollo's going to say, by default, the fridge opening is for a 36-inch fridge. Check with the customer and see what size of fridge they purchased. Um, yep. When you say you rate very cold in a quick how much how much stuff you can have to put in for it to give a feeding the flies? Like air yeah, it that is there a, is that a high bar? No. Not at all. Um I've gone through and we use water based products. So I've organized our um our site to have a whole section on finishing and our water base finish is durable and stuff like that. So I've gone through and I've written articles and just like, and like this one's like super short, right? Um, and I've taken this, yep. Yeah. So I've taken this from the information that I've, I know and I've learned from my suppliers and I've written quick little blurbs and then we can go and we can ask Apollo about it and he will, so within this back end of it, he will cite his sources as well to tell you where on your website and where within the knowledge database he pulled that information from. So if he spits out a weird answer, you can go correct it. So it's a smarter search bar for your website. Yeah. And my customers get the, the real life, real person interaction. And Apollo doesn't pretend to be me. He could. Um, but then... Um, Yep. And if we don't answer within a certain time frame, he'll jump on. So because customer service and speed of interaction is super critical to the sales process and to what people want, they expect answers now. Um, I can also set it so that outside of my demographic, people can't talk to me and they can't ask me questions and he doesn't pop up at all. So if you're in the States, you don't get to talk to me. Because I, I only want to talk to Canadians. I only want to talk to prospective customers. So that's a service for them. So I don't want to be hounded by people asking weird questions in the States because it doesn't help me at all in business, right? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, so this is a super cool tool, and it's 100% free. And it will tell you every customer that visits your website, how, where they come from, where they're located, what their IP address is, and it's all 100% free. So you can start to use that data. Um, and I, I tag myself, so when I pop on to test things, it knows Nikki's on the website right now, and it won't pop up for me when I'm trying to do stuff. It's probably outside the scope, but how do you know, how do these companies make money? Like you, it, it seems it's all free. Right? Are they keeping your data? Oh yeah, 
but it's already out there, right? It's already out there. <laughs> um, Microsoft, yeah, it's, it's already out there. <laughs> um, but Microsoft, so Microsoft has, no, um, has a version of this that you can integrate into your website that will go as far as showing you your website and exactly where people click and exactly when they leave your page, and it's totally free. It's just built into Microsoft. And so you can build your own systems within the Microsoft ecosystem. So that leads me to Copilot. Has anybody heard of Microsoft Copilot? A couple. So Microsoft Copilot is Microsoft's integrated AI that's coming out. So there's been a couple of minor releases this week while we're at the conference, and we're going to start to see it roll out. What they're doing is they're taking their proprietary version of ChatGPT and integrating it into Microsoft Office 365. But it's going to know every Word document that you've written, every email in your inbox, every everything with that Microsoft has, because Microsoft is your computer operating system, and it will then it, it will start to formulate full response emails to customer inquiries. It will start, it'll say, hey, you're writing this type of letter, and it's going to start to write that letter for you based on your company's knowledge already in Microsoft. So you're not, so you're not tapping in, you are tapping into the greater wide web of what's out there, but, you're, but it's answering it based on your company. So we'll watch. It's going to be in every single app that we use already. It, it, you're going to have the little co-pilot button, right? So it'll be akin to Siri and Alexa, um, but within your Microsoft ecosystem to help you do work faster. You look scared. <laughs> so it's a really... Basically, what I want to say about AI is you need to start using it, understanding what it's capable of, because as, as time goes on, it's just going to move faster, and you'll get left in the dust very, very quickly if you don't have the basic understanding of how it works and where it is. Um, Going to school, everybody always said, you need to learn how to do math. You're never going to have a calculator in your pocket. Well, yeah, we do, all the time. Um, you're, you need to learn how to spell correctly. No, you don't. Word processing fixes that. And it's not just word processing in a word processor. It's everywhere. Everywhere you go to type, it will correct your spelling for you. You don't need to know how to type anymore. Um, you can be doing different things. AI is going to be like that. AI is going to be so integrated into all of the tools and things that we're using so you don't have to do the little things. It'll speed you up and it'll get you, get you going. And as companies, we need to think about how our staff use it and creating policies around what they are and are not allowed to use because you don't want to end up like Samsung, with your proprietary information out there for everybody to access. So you have to have regulation within your company around how staff can use it and what they can use it for. Um, my husband, he works for Jim Pattison, um, and they had a GM summit in the spring in Cranbrook, and all the GMs from Western Canada came to visit, and my husband said, okay, I'm going to ask a question to the president of the Jim Pattison group. Does the company have any policies around using AI? And with AI coming in, what does the future of our jobs look like? Because you can go to ChatGPT and you can say, write me a 30-second radio commercial for Gitman Kitchens and Cabinetry. This is my tagline. And it's pretty darn good. <laughs> um, and... Rod Schween looked at him. He said, I'm just going to tell you this. You won't be replaced by AI. You will be replaced by somebody who knows how to use it. 
<laughs> because it's a tool to get more done faster. And at the speed that the world is moving, you can't afford to go slow. So you want to tap into tools that are going to speed you up and get things done faster. Is AI the perfect answer for things? Do you want to create your company policies and stuff that way? No, not necessarily, but sometimes you can't afford to hire the consultant to do that, or you can't afford to hire that out, but you need a policy in place, or you need to write a memo to your staff. You can get it done in minutes rather than going, okay, I got to do this, and I got to do the research, and I got to look at the laws. That information is already out there, so we can just create it for you quickly, and then you can adapt it to your company, and you can make the necessary changes. It, I'm not saying it, it doesn't replace consulting, it doesn't replace HR departments, it's a tool to use, especially in small business, um, to help you get some of those things done as we have to grow so rapidly in order to keep up and in order to stay relevant. Yeah? Consider it as a fight. A lot of people are terrified um, because you don't need to hire an IT guy if you can just go over and ask it the question and now you know how to solve your IT problem and turn it off and turn it back on again, right? Um, so it's going to change what industries look like. It's going to change what professional services look like because you can get basic information and access to that information through an AI platform. If you need help on a legal issue, Yes, you want to go hire a lawyer, but you also want to have some background. You also want to know the basics. So AI is going to get you the basic information so that when you go sit down with the lawyer, you're not starting from scratch. You're starting here and you can get more done. You get more bang for your buck in sitting with them because you don't have to go through the basics. So hope that answered the question. Because <laughs> it, is, it is scary, but it's going to be so integrated and embedded in everything that we do very, very quickly. It will replace a lot of jobs. Yes. Yeah. And I, I like that argument where people go, I don't want to use the self-checkout station. I'm not getting a discount on my groceries by checking it out myself. We all know the hiring problems. Nobody wants that job anymore, right? They're making supermarkets where you just walk in, put what you want in the cart, and it charges your credit card as you walk out the door. Those jobs aren't where people's brains are best suited to be. We see that ever-changing in the workforce. In cabinetry and construction, you're never going to replace the people on the ground building the cabinets, the people on the ground building the houses. Somebody still has to do that. It's going to change and there's a lot more machinery and automation that can come into doing it. But now you have people manning the machines and you can do more cabinets with less people, put out a more consistent product and all of that, right? We know that. We see that every day as we tour through the plants. Um, so it's, it's kind of the same thing. People don't want the boring basic job. They want to be recognized for higher level thinking. We're moving more from a blue collar society to a white collar society. You have people that are manning the operation instead of doing the work. It's easier on bodies, it's safer, you have less injuries. There's, there's a lot of pros out there to, to the advancements where we're at. So we don't, we wanna stay current, we wanna know what's happening out there and get outside of our little bubble, see what's happening with AI so that we don't get left in the dust so that we're not the only cabinet shop still banging boxes together the old way, right? You can do it faster. Any other questions? Yeah? That's your point about every, every, every innovation creates a new problem. Yep. So when Walmart went with 32 self-checkouts and only six banned, they realized that their are uh, theft went up. Uh -huh. So the savings they have at the self-checkout did not equate how much money they were losing as people were shopping. Yep. So a number of Walmart who were not all of them, but the ones that had the highest degree of staff, they shut down all the self-checkouts and have gone back to and station. 
Yep. I think with AI, it's going to be the same thing. You're you're going to implement things, and all of a sudden, once it's implemented, like you're using it, we probably will come up and have to solve them. So you have to be flexible. You have to be able to hit it and you make mistakes. Yeah, we made a mistake. Was. Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody been to an Amazon store? They're starting to pop up all over the place, and literally, you can't steal from them. You can't go in if you don't have a, an Amazon app or account, um, and you sign up at the door. It's kind of like Costco. You go in, but you can't steal from them because anything you touch, pick up, put in your cart, the millions of cameras around you are tracking it. You can take it out of your cart and put it in a different department, and it'll take it off your list. Um, and you can't, you can't shoplift that way. So they've, they've figured out how to do that. You walk out the dark door, it charges your credit card for everything that was in your cart, in your basket, in your hands. It knows. And it's being done with AI. You don't have somebody sitting in the back room for every customer that's in there watching them on a camera, right? It's all being scanned and done with AI. Maybe one more question. This kind of question. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, the super just been stuck. <laughs> very, very interesting. You know, um, it is scary, but we're not putting that genie back in the bottle. So lean into it. You start playing around with it. It's you can have it on your phone, you can ask a question. Pretty neat. And uh, you had a comment of it, you know, we're not gonna imagine stuff anymore. Start playing with it a little bit, ask questions, and your imagination is gonna run wild because you just wanna feed it more questions once you start playing with it. So um, I wrote uh, in chat GPT, please write a short thank you for attending our conference. So I'm gonna share it with you. So. We would like to extend our heartfelt thanks for attending our conference. Your presence added tremendous value to the event, and we hope you found it both informative, informative and engaging. We look forward to welcoming you again in the future endeavors. Your, pre your presence and expertise played a pivotal role in making our conference a resounding success. On behalf of the entire organization, I extend our heartfelt thanks for your dedication and professionalism. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.